The movie opens with a scene in a warehouse-like place where a group of gangsters is enjoying a durian feast. But they suddenly interrupted when a door is breached and a man rushes in, bringing along a hostage who appears injured. The gangsters then give chase to the man. The man is revealed to be Zhang Tu, an undercover detective who has spent the last four months infiltrating the gangster's hideout. He quickly calls for backup from his commanding officer. After securing the hostage, Jean Tu engages in a fierce fight with the gang members. Despite facing formidable opposition, Jean Tu displays exceptional martial arts skills as he takes on the gangster. In a fierce showdown, Jean Tu confronts the boss of the criminal operation. A heated battle ensues, with both men exchanging blows amid flying durians. Despite the intense struggle, Zhang Tu manages to gain the upper hand, eventually subduing the boss. The media reports on the successful police operation, revealing that a criminal organization responsible for kidnapping wealthy individuals has been dismantled. All the perpetrators have been apprehended. In a press briefing, Zhang Tu's commander provides details of the four-month-long operation that led to the arrests. In Beichuan City, situated on the border between mainland China and various Southeast Asian cities, Zhang Tu arrives at the bustling police station. He is warmly welcomed by all the officers and colleagues, who hold him in high regard, and Zhang Tu notices a gift box placed on his desk. Shortly after, Commander Bai emerges from his office, offering applause and congratulations to Detective Zhang Tu. The entire station then joins in the applause to celebrate Zhang Tu's remarkable achievement. Zhang Tu then engages in a conversation with Commander Bai, who is not only his superior, but also a longtime friend from their days at the police academy. However, Bai's career has advanced more rapidly than Zhang Tu's. Bai then praises Zhang Tu for his extraordinary accomplishments, particularly in saving the well-known businessman. As they chat, Bai pours tea for Zhang Tu, who expresses his desire for a promotion promised to him after completing his four-month-long mission. Bide assures him of his support, promising to advocate for his promotion with the higher authorities. However, Zhang Tu insists that the promotion needs to happen promptly, unwilling to wait any longer before abruptly leaving. Later that afternoon, Zhang Tu picks up his son, Zhang Ji, from the school dormitory. The teacher then reports concerning changes in Zhang Ji's behavior, noting a decline in his once cheerful demeanor and disobedience in class, including scribbling his books and mocking the teacher. Despite Zhang Tu's efforts to intervene and encourage his son to apologize, Zhang Ji remains resistant. Recognizing the importance of spending more time with his son, Zhang Tu agrees to the teacher's suggestion. At home, Zhang Ji expresses frustration about his father's frequent absences and doesn't want to be calmed down with kind words anymore. Despite his father's attempts to talk to him and praise his math skills, Zhang Ji remains silent. During a lighthearted moment, Zhang Tu accidentally touches his son's shoulder, causing Zhang Ji to flinch in pain. Suspecting something, Zhang Tu investigates and discovers bruises and scars on Zhang Ji's back, revealing that he's been bullied by three thugs near the school dormitory. Terrified of being abandoned again, Zhang Ji pleads with his father to stop the bullies, prompting Zhang Tu to promise his son before he falls asleep. Taking immediate action, Zhang Tu gathers information from his informant and swiftly locates the thugs. Convinced that a person named Da La is their boss, Zhang Tu heads to a nightclub called Da La, where Da La is entertaining guests, including a girl named Qin Mong Su. Zhang Tu then observes the scene and notices Da La and his friends moving to a secluded area. In the restroom, Mong Su becomes distressed and vomits due to excessive alcohol consumption. Suddenly, Da La enters and with his friends they restrain Mong Su. Zhang Tu intervenes, confronting and fighting with them, especially Da La. Da La threatens Zhang Tu and escapes outside, instructing his men to deal with Zhang Tu. All the nightclub employees swarm Zhang Tu, but they struggle to overpower him and end up getting beaten instead. Zhang Tu then contacts the office after finds drugs in Da La's pockets and requests backup due to the brawl and drug presence. Shortly after, police arrive, arresting everyone involved, including the girls, and they are taken into custody. But Commander Bai reprimands Zhang Tu for causing chaos at the nightclub without proper authorization.
Zung Tu then declines the offer of a promotion, expressing his desire to remain a regular detective. He confides in Commander Bai about Shon Ji's situation, feeling guilty for prioritizing his career over his son's needs. Hearing this, Commander Bai sympathizes and promises to help Shon Tu return to his previous position. Bai then reveals that Da La is backed by his father, Yu Kang, an Interpol fugitive involved in human trafficking. Not long after, they found 20 kilograms of drugs in Da La's car, and with this discovery they plan to interrogate Da La to track down his father. Shortly after, Zheng Tu encounters Mong Su, the girl he helped in the restroom earlier, who refuses to cooperate with the officers. Zheng Tu then intervenes, learning her name and origin from Myanmar, where Mong Su explains that she sought employment at Da La's nightclub and denies using drugs. Mong Su initially refused to cooperate, but after being warned of possible deportation, if she did not cooperate, in the end she agreed to cooperate. On the other hand, in the remote border area between Myanmar and China, Yu Kang receives a report from his lawyer about Da La's arrest. Fearing Da La might confess and reveal their location, Yu Kang recalls memories of playing with his son when Da La was young. Frustrated, Yu Kang kills his lawyer and instructs his right-hand man, Chan Jun, to find another lawyer. He is determined to ensure his son's release at any cost. Chan Jun then presents documents detailing Da La's capture, along with information about Zhang Tu and his son. In the morning, Zhang Ji wakes up to find his father beside him, relieved to hear that the bullies have been apprehended. Throughout the day, Zhang Ji plays at home, while Zhang Tu prepares lunch and reminisces about his late wife. When Zhang Tu hears his son's bike fall and a commotion outside, he rushes out to find Zhang Ji's bike abandoned and his favorite music box on the ground. After searching, Zhang Tu spots someone holding his son's hand and gives chase. However, he is struck by a car as the kidnappers flee. Returning home, Zhang Tu retrieves his car and immediately contacts Commander Bai informing him of Zhang Ji's abduction and providing details of the suspect vehicle. Commander Bai then orders his men to gather road recordings and search for the silver car with the license plate of the suspected abduction vehicle. On the other hand, Commander Bai interrogates Da La, demanding to know the whereabouts of his father. But Da La claims ignorance, stating he hasn't seen his father in five years. Enraged, Commander Bai assaults him. After that, Da La reveals that he sends money to his father every six months, but the recipient changes each time. In anger, Commander Bai storms out of the holding room, while everyone else is engrossed in monitoring CCTV footage on the highway. An officer then spots the criminals transferring to another vehicle, prompting Commander Bai and his team to spring into action. He immediately contacts Zhang Tu, informing him that the criminals are heading towards the man or border. Upon reaching the border, the criminals easily cross into Myanmar and bribe the head of the immigration office. Meanwhile, the girls from the bar, including Mong Su, are deported to Myanmar and detained at the immigration office. They are loaded onto a truck along with a suitcase, unaware that Zhang Ji is hidden inside. As Zhang Tu arrives at the border, Commander Bai explains that they need a new permit to investigate further due to recent rule changes. To expedite the process, Zhang Tu enters as a tourist while Commander Bai arranges for reinforcements. During a stop, Mong Su bravely opens Zhang Ji's suitcase and wakes him up. Together, they escape from the truck, but the driver notices and gives chase. Unfortunately, Zhang Ji injures his foot, slowing their escape. As the driver approaches, Mong Su quickly covers Zhang Ji's mouth, urging him to stay quiet. The driver searches anxiously, calling for his superiors, and informs about a woman takes the child from the suitcase and escapes, prompting the driver and his companions to turn back. Shortly after, they discover blood stains and find Mong Su and Zhang Ji. Shortly after, Zhang Tu arrives, opens the plastic covering of the truck, and questions the women about the child's whereabouts. They inform him that Mong Su took the child into the woods there Zhang Tu, also find his son's shoe, and rushes into the forest, followed by the three leaders. Meanwhile, the driver manages to stop Mong Su, but Zhang Tu arrives and subdues him. Instructing Mong Su to flee with her son, 
Jung Tu then beats the driver until he loses consciousness. Meanwhile, the three leaders, including Yu Kang, arrive. Two of them attack Zhang Tu, but he manages to defeat them. However, one of the leaders named Li Min grabs Zhang Ji and begins assaulting Meng Su, who struggles to defend herself. Zhang Tu then rushes to rescue his son, but is caught off guard and attacked by Li Min. The two previously defeated assailants reappear and kick both Zhang Tu and Meng Su, sending them tumbling down a cliff and Zhang Tu loses consciousness after hitting his head on a rock. When Zhang Tu regains consciousness, he finds himself in Meng Su's modest home. Realizing he has been unconscious for a day, with Zhang Tu grows anxious and calls Commander Bai for updates on their arrival. Bai then advises him to wait patiently for permission from the cross-border investigation team and warns against acting rashly. Feeling desperate, Zhang Tu approaches Meng Su, but instead of expressing gratitude, he demands to know the location of Yu Kang's headquarters. Meng Su, visibly upset, explains that she carried him for 10 kilometers to safety, but receives no appreciation from Zhang Tu. Seeing her bruised legs, Zhang Tu feels remorseful. Shortly after, Meng Su hands him a map, urging him to find the headquarters himself. Later, Zhang Tu encounters Meng Su buying food downstairs and offers her money to assist in finding his son. Offended, Meng Su rejects the offer, emphasizing that she cannot be bought with money before leaving. Zhang Tu then follows Meng Su, expressing apologies and pleading for her help. He assures her he didn't mean to insult her and desperately needs her assistance. Eventually, Meng Su agrees to help and shares valuable information. She then recalls being blindfolded and transported by truck to the shelter, distinctly remembering passing the temple along the way. Although there are numerous temples in the country, Meng Su remembers the distinctive shape of the temple they passed. Shortly after, they embark on a search for clues, aided by Commander Bai, who provides temple pictures to assist Zhang Tu. Despite the daunting task, Zhang Tu remains determined. As they travel the country for nearly two months, Zhang Tu and Meng Su grow closer. Meng Su confesses that upon seeing Zhang Ji in the truck, she felt compelled to help, despite the risks. She reveals her own difficult past, having worked at Da La's nightclub for four years to pay off her foster parents' debts, after being kidnapped and sold by criminals as a child. Despite the hardships, she doesn't regret her actions, driven by a desire to repay her foster parents' kindness. Moved by her story, Zheng Tu empathizes with Meng Su's tragic past. Meanwhile, Chan Jun informs his boss that the lawyer they hired has failed to save Da La from a 30-year prison sentence. Yu Kang is devastated by the news as Zheng Ji is seen alongside other kidnapped children with his fate uncertain. While continuing their search, Meng Su suddenly requests to halt, sensing they have reached the temple, indicating that the gangster headquarters must be nearby. They pause to assess the situation, with Meng Su confirming that indeed, they have found the temple. Beneath the temple, near the forested area, lies a series of warehouses. Meng Su then points out the buildings they're looking for. Zheng Tu then instructs Meng Su to contact the police and report the activities of the place while he descends. Below, Zheng Ji and the other children are unconscious, surrounded by crying kids. Using a rope, Zheng Tu descends and discovers numerous children there, all in distress. When one guard becomes enraged and enters to scold the crying children, Zheng Tu swiftly intervenes, attacking the guards and calling for backup. As the gangsters rush in, Zheng Tu fights back, wielding a hammer stick, and mercilessly beats them. Amid the chaos, one of the leaders, Ma Lang, attempts to trap Zheng Tu in an excavator, but Zheng Tu manages to evade the trap. Engaging in combat, Ma Lang attacks Zheng Tu fiercely, while above ground, Meng Su anxiously wonders why the police are taking so long to arrive. The intense brawl continues, with Zheng Tu emerging victorious over Ma Lang, just as the Myanmar police arrive on the scene. Zheng Tu, in a fit of rage, demands to know his son's whereabouts, but Ma Lang, badly injured, only responds with a mocking smirk. Shortly after, Meng Su arrives in her car, urging Zheng Tu to leave before he gets caught and deported, emphasizing that he won't be able to find his son if he stays. Reluctantly, Zheng Tu departs with Meng Su, 
feeling devastated by his failure to reunite with his son. Mong Su then scolds him, warning that he won't locate his son if he continues acting recklessly. Overwhelmed with emotion, Zheng Tu breaks down in tears, reflecting on his situation and Mong Su comforts him with a hug. Later that night, Zheng Tu opens up to Mong Su about Zheng Ji, who used to sleep with his clothes and hug them in bed. Regretting his past neglect due to his career focus, Zheng Tu wonders if his current predicament is a form of karma. Meanwhile, Zheng Ji is brought to Yu Kang's main residence and treated to a lot of food. Yu Kang then orders Li Min to eliminate Zheng Tu, with his subordinate Lu Ji volunteering for the task. On the other hand, Zheng Tu receives a call from Commander Bai, informing him that the police have obtained information from Yu Kang's captured men, confirming Yu Kang's presence nearby. While the exact location remains unknown, Zheng Tu and his team are authorized to proceed, with reinforcements on their way. The next morning, when Mong Su was about to buy breakfast, she is startled to find Lu Ji already there, seated with her foster parents. She begs him not to harm her parents, but Lu Ji asks for the drink she purchased and drugs Zhang Tu with it. Reluctantly, Mong Su hands over the drink, causing Zhang Tu to pass out. Fearful of the gang's retaliation, Mong Su and her foster parents decide to flee temporarily, leaving Mong Su heartbroken. She then realizes that she has developed feelings for Zhang Tu, who has saved her countless times and with whom she has spent a significant amount of time. Remembering Zhang Tu's kind words about her being the kindest woman he's ever met, Mong Su tearfully bids farewell and rushes back home, only to find that Zhang Tu has already been taken by Lu Ji. Meanwhile, Zhang Tu endures torture at the hands of Lu Ji, who underestimates him. Zhang Tu seizes an opportunity to turn the tables, overpowering Lu Ji and taking his phone. He discovers photos of the children, including Zhang Ji, marked as a blood type AB match for a heart transplant, leaving Zhang Tu enraged. At the same time, Mong Su, feeling sad and disappointed, seeks solace in a local bar, where she overhears an elderly man on the phone discussing his willingness to pay any price for a heart, as his grandson shares the same blood type. Mong Su quickly reacts as the old man rushes out of the bar. She then notices a car waiting and inside is Li Min. Another vehicle, driven by Li Min, arrives, followed by a three-wheeled vehicle. Seeing this, Mong Su realizes that she's been tailing the old man and finally locates the gang boss's house. Yu Kang promptly hands over documents to the old man, offering a healthy heart for his grandson at the price of three million dollars, and without hesitation, the old man hands over the money. Shortly after, Li Min receives a call from Lu Ji, but to his surprise, it's Zhang Tu on the line. Zhang Tu just wants to track their location and inform Commander Bai, who is waiting at the border. Bai then urges Zhang Tu patience as they make their way. Desperate, Zhang Tu pleads for the location, fearing they are about to operate on Zhang Ji. When the location is sent, Zhang Tu rushes there while preparations for the surgery are underway. At the same time, Mong Su carefully observes the situation and, at a crucial moment, switches off the power just as the doctor is about to begin the operation. Meanwhile, Zhang Tu races to the location in a fit of anger and breaking into the building. He confronts and subdues Yu Kang's henchmen with a club. Chan Jun and Yu Kang emerge from the building, but Mong Su joins them, hitting the old man with a stone and rescuing Zhang Ji. Upstairs, Zheng Tu searches for his son, but is attacked by Li Min. It's a tense rematch between the two, with Li Min wielding a weapon, but Zheng Tu fights back fiercely, using broken glass to gain the upper hand. Despite Li Min's speed, Zheng Tu's experience proves invaluable in the confrontation. On the other hand, Yu Kang discovers Mong Su and moves to attack her, but Zheng Tu intervenes from above. A confrontation between the two ensues, with Zhang Tu instructing Mong Su to take Zhang Ji to safety. Yu Kang then lashes out at Zhang Tu, gaining the upper hand with his sword. Despite throwing away his weapon, thinking Zhang Tu is defenseless, Yu Kang underestimates Zhang Tu's strength. Meanwhile, Chan Jun pursues Mong Su, eventually incapacitating her and abducting Zhang Ji. As the two continue their fierce battle, Zhang Tu's determination as a father proves formidable, 
Eventually, Yu Kang falls, and the combined police force arrives to apprehend all the criminals. Zheng Tu seeks out Mong Su, who tearfully reveals that someone has taken Zheng Ji from her. Both are left heartbroken, and Zheng Tu feels in despair, leaving Commander Bai deeply saddened by his friend's plight. The media reports the successful dismantling of the human trafficking network by the joint police force. Although many criminals are captured, Chan Jun remains a wanted fugitive, and Zheng Ji is still missing. Despite three years of relentless searching, Zheng Tu refuses to give up hope, tirelessly searching every corner of the country and displaying banners on his car in his quest to find his son. Zheng Tu eventually reunites with Mong Su, who has relocated to the southern part of the country, where she now assists her foster parents on their farm. Zheng Tu the expresses his gratitude to Mong Su, but insists that he will never give up searching for Zheng Ji. Mong Su prays for him and expresses her hope that he will find Zhong Ji soon. She pledges to wait for Zhong Tu to reunite with them. Suddenly, Zhong Tu senses something drawing him to a nearby farming area. He follows his instincts and walks into a sugarcane field, where he spots a child in a red shirt who turned out to be Zhong Ji. Overjoyed, father and son finally reunite, bringing the film to a heartwarming conclusion. Moral lesson from the story. If you're chasing bad guys, don't neglect your math homework, because you never know when you might need to calculate your escape route.